Hey folks, Dividend Gardener here. Welcome to Dividend Gardening. Nothing is 100% certain when it comes to the world of investing, but it's tough to argue against how reliable the major Canadian banks are. Canadian banks are the most reliable dividend payers in the world of Canadian dividend stocks. Take a look at how long the big five banks have been paying dividends. Royal Bank has been paying dividends since 1870. CIBC has been paying out dividends since 1868. TD Bank has been paying dividends since 1857. Bank of Nova Scotia, aka Scotia Bank, has been paying dividends since 1832. And last but not least, the bank with the longest record of consecutive dividend payments in Canada is Bank of Montreal, or BMO, which has been paying dividends since 1829. That is nearly two centuries of dividends. Now, I couldn't include National Bank of Canada in this example because it did go a year without paying dividends before it started up again in 1983. But even then, National Bank still has a track record of nearly four decades of dividends. Now, what about growth? I'd say that banks are pretty good at growing their dividend as they're able to, but there have been some events that have had an effect on the economy, and those events have meant that banks have continued to pay the dividend, but they've kind of put a halt to growth for the time being. One of the most recent examples was the 2007-2008 financial crisis. There was a lot of uncertainty going on all around the world, and seeing this, Canada's largest banks hit the pause button on increases and tried to keep paying dividends at the current rates. When the recession came to pass in 2009, National Bank was the first to go back to growing its dividend, and the rest of the big six followed suit. Now, think back to around March and April of 2020. There was a level of uncertainty that most people hadn't experienced in their lifetimes. The COVID-19 pandemic disrupted everyone's lives. Many people lost their jobs, many people had to very suddenly shift to working remotely, and I think even if you still had a job, there were probably a few weeks or months where you weren't so sure that was going to last. I think any dividend gardener would have been pretty concerned about the viability of their dividend gardens. Nobody had a sense of how long this would last, and nobody knew how long its effects would last on the economy and the stock market. So what about the Canadian banks and their dividends? Well, here's an article from around that time from the Financial Post. This is a quote from Manny Grauman, an analyst who was, at the time, with Cormark Securities. Manny says, The Big Five has such a long history of not cutting their dividends. There's an investor premium earned as a result of that huge amount of time, safety, and security of the dividend. You'd rather keep that intact and go raise equity at less than preferable terms. So what this means, what many is saying here, is because there are so many retail investors who have a stake in the big banks. The banks do feel some pressure to at least keep the dividend going at the current level. But this time around, there was a little bit of a difference because the banks didn't really have a choice in pausing dividend increases. That decision was made for them by the Office of the Superintendent of Financial Institutions, or OSFI. It's an agency of the Government of Canada that regulates banks, and it also regulates insurance companies as well, which explains why some of the big insurance companies like Manulife, Sun Life, and Great West Life Co. haven't boosted their dividends either. Here's an excerpt from the COVID-19 measures FAQs, and it clarifies that decision that the OSFI announced on March 13th, 2020. It says, Institutions can continue to pay regular dividends but may not increase them. Institutions may also declare special or irregular dividends on a case-by-case -case basis as set out in OSFI's December 14th, 2020 announcement. Institutions must immediately halt all purchases or buybacks of common shares, including buybacks previously approved by OSFI. Fast forward a year and a quarter, the banks have been abiding by this rule for 15 months, and now the situation looks much different. Vaccine rollouts are ongoing, restrictions tend to be lifting, there's much less worry, for the most part, about any adverse effects on the economy, 
and the bank stocks have all rebounded from the lows of last spring. Not only that, but just recently, many of the large US banks are back to increasing their dividends. JP Morgan Chase increased its dividend by 10.5%. Bank of America's next dividend is going to be up 17%. Goldman Sachs boosted its dividend by 46%. Wells Fargo doubled its dividend, although keep in mind this is following an 80% dividend cut at the height of the pandemic. And Morgan Stanley, a 100% increase, although it is worth noting here that this does follow a dividend cut in 2009 that only managed to make it back to its previous level in 2018. So the question on everyone's mind is, when will Canadian banks raise dividends again? The short answer is, we don't know for sure yet. The long answer is that the OSFI needs to give that green light, and right now, its official position is to be cautious. Peter Routledge, the head of the OSFI, was recently interviewed about this, and he's made it very clear that while the financial uncertainties are indeed getting better, it's not to a level where the office is comfortable allowing dividend increases and share buybacks. Peter says, OSFI has long stated, and I repeat, that will continue to err on the side of being a little late in lifting the restrictions as opposed to a little early. There is speculation that maybe we'll see the restrictions lifted at some point in the second half of 2021, but again, that's just speculation. Peter Routledge knows that people are interested in finding out when those restrictions will be lifted, but asked for everyone to be patient. And this commentary by Rita Treacher, senior business writer for The Globe and Mail, makes some really good arguments as to why it's the right move for the OSFI to be patient. For one thing, Rita says that the pandemic isn't over just yet. Cases are dropping, but the numbers aren't at zero yet, and new variants are still a bit of a wild card. If restrictions end up having to tighten yet again, we could see more economic uncertainty. There's also still the potential for soured loans. These are when a loan is more than 90 days overdue, but remains unpaid. If borrowers aren't able to pay back those loans, the banks may need to draw on the resources that they have instead of setting those aside to pay as dividends or to use to buy back their shares. I agree on both of those points. As a dividend gardener, yes, growth is important, absolutely, but I do want reliability just as much, if not more. Dividend increases don't really mean much to me if they have to be walked back the next quarter, so I'm good with waiting. Although we don't know yet when the OSFI is going to change the restrictions and what that might mean for the big six banks, investment analysts have been speculating on what kind of increases we might see. Now, it's unlikely that the boosts are going to be quite as dramatic as some of the ones we've seen in the US, but Paul Goldberg, an analyst for Bloomberg Intelligence, thinks that the average dividend increase among the big six banks could be 13%. Paul predicts that the largest increases, the ones that would exceed the 13% average, would come from National Bank of Canada and Bank of Montreal, based on their earnings estimates. Many Grauman with Scotia Capital believes that National Bank could raise its dividend by 16%. On the opposite end of the spectrum, Paul Goldberg thinks that the smallest increase would be no increase at all, just a continuation of the dividend at its current rate from Bank of Nova Scotia. So are dividend increases on the horizon? Again, while it's impossible to say definitively, I think probably for most, if not all, of the big six banks. As far as when, maybe later this year, maybe not until 2022. Regardless, one thing is clear, just be patient. If you enjoyed this video, please plant a like, it really, really helps the channel to grow. Also, quick disclaimer, I am not a financial advisor and this video is for entertainment purposes only. The information in this video might be outdated or inaccurate. Always, always do your own due diligence or seek the advice of a licensed financial professional. Investing carries risks and past performance is no guarantee of future results. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.